soon and so will this start soon hopefully you all can hear me there is a little delay presenting to everybody i'm going to give everybody just a second to kind of get settled um, and make sure that they are good to go um so uh, some of you guys already have the question form i've i've included it here in this link to the slides if you would like the slides honestly I'm not going to be using the slides a whole lot today. A lot of it will be slides later on if you want to go back and refer to it. Um, a lot of it will be kind of a, a live demo um, of today. Remember the question form, I'm going to do my best to monitor both um, the live stream uh, and the question form. So uh, hopefully you guys are all out there. Hopefully you're wearing your green. Um, as you can see, I got my green, by the way. It's not just the top. Just for you all here, I don't know if you, hopefully you can see, I have also worn or am wearing my kilt. I know um, it's Scottish thing for me, but um, Irish people out there too uh, wear kilts. So again, I'm just going to get started here in a few minutes. Again, this is being recorded. Um, the question form is out there. Um, the question form is out there. I will do my best as kind of like some of these questions pop up. Um, to address them as I'm going. Um, and again, uh, make this as helpful as I can for you. You can access the slides at coachben.org. So you can go ahead and access those slides there. There are all some other slide presentations. I just wanted to make it um, as easy as I could for you to access the slides if you wanted to, the, to, to do that. Um, so this live stream, let me give you some suggestions. I would like to try to make this as hands on as possible. The EdTech team sent out a survey and in the survey, basically, uh, there was people that were not feeling comfortable using Seesaw, uh, which is fine, which is great. But I want to make sure in the beginning part of this is really just going to be going over the basics of Seesaw. I'd like you to play around with me. You can watch my screen if you want screen if you want to. Um, I always find it's going to be the most helpful uh, for you to go ahead and try these things um, as well. And so, again, here's the question form. If you want to access the slides, it's at coachben.org. And hopefully everybody is uh, settled here. Um, we'll officially start with this once we get going. Um, a few things. So remember, um, Seesaw, if your students have been logging in through the portal, um, and they get kicked out of Seesaw for some reason, the easiest way to get them back in is to simply have them log in through the portal. If they did not log in through the portal and they have a class code, if they get logged out, you may have to contact some of those families. Um, but just, just keep in mind, this is a great way for your students to access content at home. I know we do have the option of sending out some packets and I'm probably going to send home um, some paper myself once we're allowed to. However, um, those packets are not necessarily going to be what teaches our kids. It's going to be you that still is going to uh, teach those kids. And so I'm going to hopefully show you some simple ways for everybody to be able to use Seesaw again. The first half, the first hour or so, um, I'm going to just go over the basics again, click along, play along with me. I want to make sure you know how to uh, use this. Um, again, I can see kind of the questions that are popping up and I'll address those as we go. Thank you, uh, Anna from Montebello. I appreciate those. Um, so I will hopefully answer those questions as we get going. And so if you guys are ready, again, here is the slides. I'm not going to use the slides a whole lot. What I would like for you to do, and hopefully my screen's large enough on computer is your computer. Right now, you are looking at me and you are watching me. Now, hopefully, I'm going to be able to guide you through this instruction with you clicking on these same things as I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to open up my Seesaw class. So go ahead and open up a new tab. OK, I'm going to click on my new tab here, the plus button. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to open up my Seesaw class. Some of you guys enter through the portal. I've just kind of bookmarked it here. Um, this is my Seesaw classroom. Again, I'm going to try to go slow. I don't want to go too fast. And so if I'm going to a little too slow for you, I apologize. I would rather go too slow than go too fast. Keep in mind that you will be able to watch this again. So again, here is my Seesaw class. 
Now, I'm not going to have you play around with your own classroom. I'm going to have you play around with a new classroom. You can delete it later. So this is my class. All of my students are in here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on my name. So if you see your face up there, if you're listening to me, it's in the upper left hand corner and you can see your face up there. All right. And uh, what you are going to do is click on where it says your name and maybe your icon. Maybe it's not your face. It's my face. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to go down to create new class. And this is going to be our test class. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create new class. Hopefully I'm going slow enough for you. Doesn't matter. You can name your class. I'm going to name my class test class or fun class, whatever you want to do. You can choose your grade level. It's important to choose your grade level um, because we're going to look at the activities library later. So I'm going to click, uh, put my name. I'm going to choose my grade level on the pop-up and I'm going to click up here on my green button. Again, this first part for this first hour, we're just going to really play around with the tools. Um, keep in mind that your students uh, have a touch screen. I'm actually doing this live stream from my Chromebook. And so uh, now you can see your new class. There should be some pop-ups here. Again, we're just going to play. And so you see the gr green add button in your screen. So the first thing we're going to do is they're just going to click on this green button. Okay, when I click on my green button, I have three options as a teacher. Option number one, I can post student work. Post student work to their journal. Okay, and we'll talk about those different um, uh, parts of your class in a little bit. Number two, I can assign an activity. An activity is a created template that students are able to complete. Think about it as your black line masters. And number three, I am able to send announcements. When you send an announcement, if you have families connected, you can send it to your families or you can send it to your students and that will show up in the inbox. Now with something like send an announcement, if you haven't been using it, I wouldn't necessarily start using it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, again, you clicked on the green plus sign and I'm gonna click on post student work. Hopefully you're following along with me and I'm going slow enough that you're able to do that. So the green plus sign that says add and I'm gonna click on post student work. When this comes up, these are basically your options here that you're gonna have. Um, so the options that you can see, thanks Claudia, by the way, for the shout out. Uh, I am a little nervous. I don't normally get nervous for these things, but I am. Um, here's the options for what students or teachers can do. Number one, you can post a photo, right? You can take a photo with your Chromebook. You can post a photo. On that photo, you can record. You can draw. You can type. Number two, you have a drawing mode. And again, the drawing mode is really nice for the uh, touch screens uh, Chromebook. And, um, and the students, we can rely on that a lot if they have touch screen. Uh, number three, I have a video. And so I can record a video. Videos are limited to five minutes. You can record five minutes videos. So if you've seen some of the videos I've been posting, they're all under five minutes. And the reason is if they're not under five minutes, I can cannot post them to Seesaw. So don't go and make this awesome six minute video, perhaps in Screencastify, which you learned about yesterday and post it here. Another option for me is to upload files. So if you notice, I can upload Google files. Can you directly upload Google Slides? Yes. This goes to a question, right? Um, maybe we had earlier. So Google Slides, for those of you, uh, if you this is a little too much for you, just plug your ears. Google Slides, you can put videos in Google Slides that are longer than five minutes and you can share those with your students. Um, I don't have a problem helping you out with that at some other point. Now is not going to be the time. Um, so it, the next thing we have is our note. Again, by the way, with upload, you can upload from drive, you can upload photos, you can upload videos A note. This is great for typing. Um, it's like kind of like a word processor. And then we have a link. Thanks, Sean. I believe in us too. We can do this. So I want to walk through each of these uh, with you just to make sure you know what they are. So make sure you feel comfortable. Again, the people I'm really talking to right now are the people that feel a little bit uncomfortable with Seesaw. And that's okay. If you feel comfortable with this, it's all right. You can go ahead and, and um, you can click along. You can um, go ahead and look at my presentation or you can search for some activities. So the first thing I'm going to do in my student work is I'm going to post a photo. All right. 
And so I'm going to, you can see this pops up. I can have uh, on when I have my photo, I have three different options to take a photo. Um, and so I'm going to take a photo. Now, when you take a photo, literally, it could be a photo of a worksheet if you really want it to be, or it could just be a photo of yourself. I am going to take a photo of myself here. Are you ready? I just click here and I can just touch my fingers. Tease. All right, now some of the cool things about taking a, a photo, right? Again, this is a photo of me. Um, but you know what? I'm actually going to redo this and to redo this by deleting. Okay, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to use something in my classroom here. I'm going to take a photo and let me grab this real quick. Ah. All right. I'm going to take a photo of this. So ready? Mm. Mm. Okay, not a perfect photo. It's a little hard to hold up a big piece of chart paper like that. So let's say, for example, this is a little uh, a photo, right? Here's what few things I can do. Number one, again, my students have touch screen. They can click on the utensils. Now, if they click on the utensil, there's the pencil. I can click on the pencil. If I click on it again, I can change the size of my pencil, right? Click on the marker, click on it again, change the size of your marker, click on it again, change the size of your marker. I can come over here and I can change the uh, color. You can see on the right side, there's this kind of rainbow and you can see as I'm moving the rainbow up and down, it changes the color of my marker, right? I got a highlighter down here and these tools are, are you can see these almost in, uh, in also when you're doing the drawing, these are the same tools. I can do this, right? Change the color. I, this is like my favorite, check it out. And one of the things I like to show students, oops, what can I do? I can click on this button up here in the top corner and I can do what? Undo. So I can click the undo button up here. That's a, a useful function. I honestly don't use the eraser that much. I try to teach students to use the undo. So for example, um, what I could do is I could actually record like a little lesson for my students. This is going to be interesting because it's going to be like a double recording. Let's see how this works. And so I'm going to hit the record. You can see it's going to count down. These are the things I can do. Uh, you can see also this awesome arrow. So I could say, hello, students. Okay, I'm going to practice reading these words. Remember, this is an article. This is an adjective. This is a noun. Right now, we're really just kind of playing around. But you can see when I bring up the record, I can actually record. I can move this little arrow here. I can point it to things. When I'm recording, I can actually record and underline. Here's the word the. Here's the word pink. Here's the word twigs. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I could even... Um, Let's go back, go back, undo. I can even click my text. I can even say, here's my sentence. The pink pigs run, okay, period. The pink pigs run. And so you can see I have lots of different options. This is a little meta. I can even put a picture. Yep, see the camera? I'm probably going a little too fast. I'll slow down. I can even put a picture inside my picture so that you could see a few different options. It's all right to be a little silly, right? I can put a picture inside of my picture. Kind of meta, isn't it? Um, if you look at these three dots, again, and a lot of these are the same, I can click on background. Again, let me show you that again in case you miss it. So on the left side, again, here's my options. The text, the recording, which I'm recording, uh, picture, and I can do that and then at any time, and then these three dots. And so in this three dots right here, um, I can change the background if I want to. My students' favorite background, of course, is the rainbow. And it, you can see it just puts behind the picture with the three dots here. I can actually add shapes. And you can see these shapes pop up from the bottom. I can click on a shape and I can add the shape. And you can see there's lots of different shapes, even for uh, some music lovers out there. Okay, and then click on it again. So again, all I did is I took the picture. Oh, by the way, sorry. Uh, squirrel. You can see down here I can actually change the color of my shape. All right, so again, this is just a, fo a photograph that I took, but I turned it into a recording. I was able to take pictures on it. I was able to insert shapes on it. I was able to write a sentence. I probably went a little fast for you there. I apologize again. My tools down here. I have my hand, which I can move, my pencil, a pen, a highlighter, a magic marker, an eraser, and this arrow, which only will show up when I'm recording. The tools on my left, I have my text box, which I can type in. I have my record button, which I am currently recording. I have my camera. 
And then I have this right here. Um, yes, by the way, I just had a question come in, Melinda, and I will answer this uh, question right now. Um, you can upload a PDF uh, to Seesaw um, directly. The only thing is sometimes a PDF the size of the screen. And so maybe I'll kind of talk about that a little more in the second half. So once I'm done with my recording, I can hit done. It's going to pop up. And so I'm going to be able to actually listen to my recording. I always encourage my students to listen to their recording right here. Again, this was just a picture. Um, then I can hit the green check and that's going to go ahead and submit that to my class. Now, as a teacher, I have an option of what students are going to come up with students. I want to see it right now. This is the only student in my classroom. When you do it in your classroom, you can assign it to either some students. You can give it to all students. Again, we're just playing right now. That was one feature you can use, and that is the camera. OK, hit the green check. That's important to train your students to hit the green check, not once, but twice. And so you can see this this shows up right here in my journal. OK, so my journal. Um, basically, my journal, it's a stream of everything that's posted to Seesaw. If I go back to my class here, you can see in my journal everything that's posted to Seesaw. So you have some of my students posting some stuff from home. I have some of my students that were doing classwork. All right. And so you can see my journal. I see everything that's in my classroom. And we'll talk about the difference between the activities in the journal. All right. Um, another question, by the way, I am. What am I using to recording? I am using uh, our Google Meet. It's a little bit more tricky, though, to do that. Um, and so maybe at some point that will be offered in, a, in another live stream. So that was my class. I'm going to go back to my test class over here. Sorry, let me. Uh, I have two computers going here. And so I need to be able to make sure to see your questions. All right. So let's experiment again. Again, the first thing we did was the camera. So I'll, I'm in my class, my test class, the green button, the magical green button. I'm going to hit add. For now, I'm going to go to post student work. Again, you can see the options we have for posting student work. Uh, we did photo already. Now what we're going to do is drawing. By the way, the questions that just came in, the PDF, you should just be able to upload it directly here when you click on upload. Again, some of it is uh, the size of the PDF. Um, and so uh, just some things to consider what you're going to just have to learn um, as we go, what's going to what is going to look best for your students. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drawing tool. Now, everything is the same as the photo, except what don't I have? I don't have a photo. So the drawing tool is really good to think about. Perhaps um, I don't like kids, honestly, to write that much with their finger because when they end up writing, guess what? I'm using my finger on the screen. It doesn't look that bad. But you know what? The students, what they do is they pick the fattest marker here and then they write and it looks like this and it looks really bad. So usually I don't have students just write on a blank screen. I think it's better to give them something to write on unless, of course, you train your students. Um, it's a little more difficult uh, to do. Um, and so writing words on the screen, not my first choice, but, you know, sometimes you got to do if that's if that's what you're going to do. You got to figure out what works for you. Sometimes it's better if they're going to write again to have them trace something or perhaps to put some lines in there. And, and maybe we'll cover that a little bit later. So here's my options again. So with this, if you can think about it, like I can again record. So anything I can I can do with my drawing, I can record. So, again, if I was thinking about doing a little mini lesson, I could record it and we could say. All right. All right, class, today we're going to work on our number bonds. And remember, our number bonds, we have a part and we have a part. And then we're going to connect those to our whole. Notice when I go down to the bottom, if you can see my tools disappear for a second. Uh, one thing it is when you're switching colors, it's hard to get the exact same colors. So students, here's my part and my part and whole. So here's what I'd like you to think about. I want you to go and grab a few toys and I want you to go ahead and count those toys. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Anyways, as you can go, you can see I can kind of do my instruction here. And as this is doing, it's actually recording all of my strokes. I'm not going to make this video too long so you can actually see kind of what it looks like. Um, so when I push play, you can, I don't know if you can hear my video there. Um, as far as kinder friendly, I don't usually, uh, for my kinder students, I usually just use one page in each assignment. So some of you are looking, you can see um, there's this add page button. 
Um, I try to stick to my activities doing one page. If you feel like your students are comfortable, you can add multiple pages and they can do multiple problems. Okay, so when I click on add a page, it actually added a second page. The tricky part is though, they cannot record over multiple pages. See how this recording is on this page, but it is not on this page. So then if I record again, I have to kind of start over my recording and I'm going to go blah, 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 talk, 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 talk. Okay. So now I can click on this page. I can hear my recording. I can click on this page. I can hear my recording. Um, so it's kind of up to you as far as how many pages you use. I typically stick to one page, but if you want to do multiple problems, maybe I would rather than doing honestly a PDF, maybe with five problems in a small screen, I think it's better to try to maybe screenshot just the individual pictures and put them on um, different pages. Again, if, if that's kind of for you uh, more advanced users out there. So again, when I'm done, what do I need to hit? You got it, the green button. How many times am I probably going to have to hit it? You got it two times. So once the green button, okay, for us, again, it's a little different. We have this part where we add it and we can assign it to students. You can assign it. This is a great way to do it in groups. So what we went over is we went over uh, the camera feature. You can take pictures. Uh, we went over the uh, drawing picture. You can draw. You can see these things are showing up in my journal. Okay, you can see all of these things that are in my journal. Again, next thing, we're going to go ahead and click this green button. And we're going to go, yep, post student work. Let's go ahead. Let me just pause here. If you have a, if you have your drink of coffee right now, happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers. I got my green. Just for a record, a kind colleague brought me this coffee. And so anyways, we have our photo, we have our drawing, we have our video or video, rodeo, rodeo. Yes, bad jokes. I got to keep you engaged. So when I do a video, here's one of the easiest things that I feel like you can do in Seesaw, especially if you're home, Real, uh, especially if you're in your classroom. Give me one second here. Excuse me. So one of the things I've been doing in my morning message is instead of trying to get all fancy, I can just do it like this and I can just do all my explanation here on a whiteboard. Um, this is some things that I assigned it for my students today in their morning message that I sent out. I post mine on Seesaw, I post it on Facebook, I post it on YouTube. I know it's a little crazy. So literally, if I wanted to do a video here, I could get my video up and I could just hit record. Ready? Five minute limit. Got to make it a short lesson. Hey there, Kinder Rockets. It's me, your teacher, Mr. Cogswell. And here I am going to give you a quick les lesson on a few sounds. The sounds I'm going to give you a lesson on are sounds we've been reviewing. So here we have the sound. Look at my mouth sound and here we have another sound we've been reviewing is the sh sound right these are two letters but they make one sound so the sound in thursday right thursday the beginning sound of thursday or the ending sound of bath all right here's our next sound it's sh as in shell shell the beginning sound sh see my mouth sh or in fish. All right. So what you're going to do now is I want you to go ahead and do blah, 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 buddy, blah, 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 blah. When I'm done, I can hit pause or I can just click my green button up here. Um, this is the simplest way for you to really get your way, uh, your concept across, right? It's really nice for students to be able to see you again. I'm going to hit the green button as a teacher. I can assign it to my students, hit that green button again. And where's this going to show up? It's going to show up in their journal. So students can see all this stuff in their journal. Um, and so when I've been doing my morning, morning messages, students uh, are posted to their journal. For you, when you're giving students lessons, I'm going to suggest activities, but we're not in there quite yet. So let me check again a few of my questions. Um, and again, some of these we'll get to. How do I share my videos outside of Seesaw? I'm going to show you. Um, I can show you that in a little bit. I can see, should videos be posted to journal or activities? These videos, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to do it a little bit differently if you um, are doing it. Um, you're going to have to do it a little differently if you're doing it through, through activities. I would suggest doing it through journals. Um, a question just came in. How many videos am I sending out daily? Right now, usually I'm sending like one morning message 
And then I'm sending a few videos that are kind of like instruction and I'm doing, um, I'm trying to do two of those. I am not set in stone right now. Here's what we really need to be focusing on. I think trying, trying new things. Like you could send the, the kids a paper packet at home, but the packet's not going to teach them. Is it good practice? Yes. But you can also simply record a video like going over your paper packet. Hey, look at this page. This is page number one. This is what you do on page number one. Do this, this, and this. It's going to be a lot more meaningful. And students, they really appreciate that connection. Um, so I think even if you could send one video a day to students, um, I think that's great. If you want to, by the way, share a video, I guess I'll show you right now. So look, here's my screen, right? Here's my journal. So you can see when I scroll down, I have a few options. I have like, right? I can like anything. I can comment now. So you can comment on a student. So this is pretty cool for my kinder kids. What I'm doing is when I go to comment, I actually click on the microphone and this pops up. Mr. Cogswell, you did a great job on your video. Good job. Keep up the great work. I hope you're safe. Good job. Keep it up. I don't need to do the thumbs up, of course, but you can see it out there. And so uh, that voice comment, sorry, I got a little distracted. I will show you how to uh, share this if you would like to share the video directly. And that way, if parents maybe can see it, the voice comments processing, I can listen to it again. I put the check and here it is. Here's my voice comment. Now, if I want to share this particular video outside of Seesaw, when I click on the item, you can see here's a few options when I click on the item. All I have to do is go to share item. When I share the item, it will be a shared link. And even if they don't have a Seesaw account, I can control C, which is for copy or command C if you're on a Mac or right click, right, and copy it. And then I can paste it and send it to parents like Class Dojo, Remind, if I want to do those lessons and send them directly to parents. Um, so that's another option as far as uh, doing that. All right. So those were definitely a few more advanced features. If you wanted the three dots, like just like in Google, those of you have heard me say it's important. So you can see there's a lot of different options that you can do there. I'm not necessarily going to get into all those options today or right now. All right. Time for recess. Do you hear the bell? No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, so here we go. I'm going to hit back into my ad. All right. Oh, you want me to show? Yes, I can show how to share the video again. Thank you. Okay, so where am I? I'm in my journal. I'm going to go ahead and pick whatever video I want to share. Okay, so if you're in your journal, find any assignment. It can be a video. It can be any assignment. All right, so here I am. I'm going to go ahead and see the three dots on the bottom of your assignment. I click here, and it should come up where you share the item. Okay, share the item. All right, so I'm going to click share the item. Here's the link. You do not want to use the embed code. Nope, no embed code. Share link. So I click on the link. Again, control C if you're on a Chromebook or a PC. Command C if you're on a Mac. So you hold command, you push C. Or you right click it, which is a lot of times two fingers. So I'm going to go to copy, right? And then whatever message I send to my parents, tech me text message, remind class dojo. I'm just going to go there and paste that. Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you for asking me to do that again. Um, I have no problem doing that. Hopefully I'm going. Um, and yes, you could share that item to Google Classroom and students could click on it. Um, so yes, Sally, you could share that item to Google Classroom. It is going to be a little tricky kind of navigating between the two if your students aren't, aren't trained. Um, so yes. All right. Thanks again for your questions. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm not going too slow. I'm going just right. Um, all right, so just let me say, let's all breathe for a second. I know, let's take some time to process. So again, we went over just simply adding stuff. We did a photo, we did a um, drawing, and we did a video. All right, the last thing I think I'll at least show you is a note. Um, well, I guess I'll, sh I'll show you maybe a few of the others, but here we go. All right, so again, um, I'm going to click, go up here to the green button ad, click on the green button ad, and I'm going to go right here to post student work. So we covered the photo, we covered the drawing, we covered the video. All right. I'm going to skip to note. Now, again, if your students aren't used to do, using a note um, and typing, this might be a challenge for them. But uh, I have some kindergartners that are, that are already typing their names. Um, they're typing some sentences. And I know a few other kindergarten teachers have done. So note is good because, right, right, practice your sight words. All right, Kinder Rockets, open your note. Let's type the word the, T-H-E, the. 
finger space. The finger space bar is the big bar at the bottom. Ready? The. All right. What's our next sight word? We're going to go I. And for the I, you're going to need the shift button. Okay. The shift. Look for the shift button. It's on the left. That's the one I put the blue sticker on. Shift. Hold the shift button down. I. Now, I'm not recording, although I could record, right? Um, and by the way, when you do record, interestingly enough, if I put check, that is actually where I record. So pump fake, I wasn't recording there, so I couldn't give that beautiful instruction I just gave there. Um, of course, you could do it in Screencastify for more advanced users. But again, I can use the note. If I need to go back, I can hit the back button up here, it, but I'm going to have to delete and start over. So I go to the note. So I like to celebrate St. Patrick's Day for many reasons. Boom. Okay. So I can hit check. So if I wanted to kind of like perhaps encourage my students to do this, I could record something. All right, students, what I would like you to do is I would like you to tell me why you like to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So go ahead in your journal, open up a note and start typing your note and do your best. After you type your note, you can read it and record it just like I am. All right. And so you can see that option for the note is just simple. It's for typing. Um, if you want to start on simple, you can have kids start type, start typing type site words. You can have them type their name. As you can see, um, one thing you got to get used to is my green button is not ready yet. And so that means it's just telling me whatever I did is processing. So now my green button is live. I can hit the green button again. Students are going to have to hit it twice. Now, maybe you're wondering what this draft mode is. Draft mode basically saves my assignment so I can go back to it later. So when I click draft, okay, this is a note to the teacher. It's saying my draft is not visible to students because I'm a teacher. But if your student is not done, they hit draft. If I save the draft, okay, it's included in Seesaw for Schools. Great. All right. If, if I save the draft, it should be saved. Okay. So let's go back. Let's see. No. Nope. It's a little different as a teacher. I've never actually used this draft as, so let me see if I do the draft. Let's try it again. Wah, wah, wah. Here we go. Try the draft. My Chromebook is a little slow right now. Try the draft. I guess for now, I'm going to X out of it. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go delete and start over, and we'll see if it shows up. No, this will not happen to your students. When your students hit the draft, it will be safe for later, and they're going to be able to access it. Um, and so that draft feature, if, again, if, you, if that's something new to your students, don't worry about it. Um, that really will kind of come up in activities. Okay. All right. Oh, I can see maybe somebody invited me as a co-teacher to their class. Uh, anyways, so I'm not seeing my draft here. But again, students, when they do a draft, they'll be able to open that a little bit later. Okay, so the next uh, post-student work is we have is a link. So why would I want to use a link? Well, let's say one of my favorite sites for students to practice things is ABC Yeah or Yeah. I don't know how to say that. So I'm going to go to ABC Yeah. And um, one of my sites that I really like kids to go to, I don't like them necessarily just going here. Oh, turn off my ad blocker. It's probably going to pop up. Uh, so I'm going to go here to kindergarten. One, there's a few of these that I really like as far as this goes. Um, some of my favorite, these are definitely not all created equal. Um, some of my favorite is keyboarding zoo is a good one to get your kids uh, starting with uh, keyboarding. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. Here's the website I want to send my kids. I click on my link up here. How am I going to get my link to Seesaw? Let you think for a second. Oh, by the way, sorry, pause question a note cannot be uh, something cannot be added a picture cannot be added to the note feature however you could have a picture and then use the text box to type on that maybe I'll show you that a little bit later again okay so here's my website how do I copy it I select it all I can hit control or command C on my keyboard or I can right click it here you can see copy there's copy so now I go back to my seesaw tab any link as long as it's not blocked here. So I'm going to go to my link, right? I clicked on link and control or command V or you double right click it and hit the paste button, right? Okay, then I hit check. Now when I'm sharing a link, it should uh, load in a second with the thumbnail. Again, we just have to be patient sometimes and this is a great time to uh, take a sip of coffee, right? 
So the other thing is when I share a link, I can record a message. So ready? All right, students, here's your keyboarding zoo activity. What I'd like you to do is click on the green button in the middle, click on there, and today I want you to use the letter sound. So every time you type the letter, use the sounds. Remember, your goal is not to touch the screen. Your goal is to touch the keyboard. And as always, do your best. You're a kinder rocket. So I'm going to hit the green. Okay, again, you can see it's processing. The green just basically ended my recording. Um, again, for the video, for the link, again, all I did is I went to my website, right? I found the website I wanted to. This is uh, ABC Yeah Keyboarding, okay? And so um, ABC Yeah is a great tool. I'll kind of just come back here while we're waiting for that to upload because I know probably a few of you were curious about this. So ABC Yeah, um, there's, some, there's some good activities in here. Um, some of my favorites for those of you that are watching for the younger ones, um, the alphabetical order is pretty good one. Um, I found, uh, this letter bubble one here for the younger kids is pretty fun. Um, keyboarding zoo is good, uh, for, uh, the kiddos. Um, I also like any of the fuzz bugs one that you see, I feel like are really good for the math games here. The fuzz bugs one, these are definitely, some of these are definitely more educational than others, but these fuzz buzz bugs one are pretty, um, pretty fun as far as um, some interactive activities that you could give your kids. All right. And so again, once you pick your link, it, once you pick it, you just click on it, whatever link you want to share. I'm going to go up to my link, click on my link, see how the whole thing is highlighted on my link. If I just click in the bar, really, if I just click somewhere in the bar, it, uh, a lot of times it'll highlight the whole thing. Click in the bar. If not, I just drag it. And how am I going to copy it? Again, Control C, Command C. And then you go back to your seesaw. I'm opening up the questions again. I apologize. I'm a one man band today. I'd go back and seesaw. And then I would paste the link in here. I can record what I'm doing again, just like the note. I hit check. I hit check again. I assigned it to all of my students. Um, yes, and uh, shout out to Teresa. Thanks for sharing. Yes, uh, Go Noodle announced that they will be free to parents during the closure. So you could also send that out. That's a that's a great idea. Um, thank you. I appreciate you asking me to slow down. Hopefully that helped you. So here's the link here. When students click on it, it will open a pop up into a, the website and it will take them directly to the activity. Um, I am not assigning all my activities on the computer, by the way. Some of my activities that I'm giving them are, are actually going to be off the computer. My instruction is just on the computer. So again, everything that you can see that I added here is where? It's all in the journal. And students can be able to see their journal. I'm going back to my class. Um, you can see here, oop, one, let's see. There's a one unapproved post. Exciting. All right. Oh, good. Where do I find the sight words in the PowerPoint slide that you shared two weeks ago? Thank you for sharing that, parent. I'm going to have to get back to them. Great parent communication for that. Um, anyways, when I go here to my kids in their journal with my students, see up here it says class journal. I can see everybody's stuff or I can click on these individual students um, to be able to see their stuff. All right. Um, so I'm going to go back to my test class. The only other thing, and, and this is I don't this is the one I probably use the least under again hitting the green button in my test class. I'm hitting the green button, the add button, I'm going to post student work. And here, upload, right? So upload. When I upload, I can upload, look, this is one of the questions we had earlier. We can upload a PDF, we can upload a video, we can upload up to 10 images, and that would be like 10 pages, one PDF. So your videos, how many minutes can your videos be? Five minutes. They also have a certain limit to the size that they can be. Um, and so sometimes I've had some issues with some of my morning messages of having to decrease the size. So maybe your morning message, you just record directly in Seesaw. You can see when I upload, I can select from Drive. Let's see, select from drive here. Let me pick something. It might, if you've never connected to your drive, you might have to actually have to connect it. It might say, do you allow access to your drive? And you're going to click yes. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to connect it. So let me see here. Let's go to my remote learning. Um, here's a one I sent home, Bean Math at Home. 
I can select this and it's going to upload it. So that was a Google slideshow that I uploaded. So keep in mind, if for those of you a little bit more advanced, if you have longer videos, you can embed them from your drive into a Google slide. I haven't tried that yet. So I guess we're going to have to see uh, how that works. I actually have one in this uh, in this slideshow. Again, we're uploading. Um, so what I did is I uploaded a slideshow. How, how do we keep teacher journal posts from getting lost in the student's journal? That is a great question. And I have an idea for that. Um, let me show you what my idea is here in a second. Um, Anna from Frank Paul. It's always great to see uh, familiar names pop up here. And again, um, hopefully I'll get back to some of your questions So uh, that I missed earlier. So here you can see, here's my Google slideshow. Again, you can see the whole thing here. And interestingly enough, I could actually annotate on the slides in here. Now, here's what I'm curious with. Yep, see the video that I had in here didn't work this way. So you might have, we might have to be a little bit more creative with that. But here's my Google slideshow. Again, I uploaded it. The students can just go through it. You can record on it. Remember, just recording one slide at a time. That could also be your direct instruction. And then I hit check. Um, so. I covered all of the tools that you can use. Here's my review. In this student, these are all the tools that you have as a teacher. And this includes what you do in the activity, right? Uh, so we have, again, a photo. You can do a drawing. You can do a video, five-minute video. You can record on a photo. Five minutes, you can record on a drawing. Five minutes, um, you can upload slides. You can do a note. And you can do a link. All right? If I want to get out of here, I just click the X. All right, so hopefully you're feeling a little bit better when it comes to at least the basic, 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 basic tools of Seesaw. Um, so let me pause here for a second. I would, I'm not going to get into activities yet. I'm going to cover that in the second half, which will be in about 20 minutes. Here's a few things that I do uh, want to talk about. We're going to get into our settings. We had one question from um, Anna. How do I get my students stuff, my students stuff from being lost? Now, this is something maybe new for some of your students, but if you're in your Seesaw test class, I want you to look in the top right hand corner of your screen. You're going to see a wrench there. All right. Go ahead and click on the wrench. I'm going to wait for you a second. Yeah, the, the Google Slides, we'll see as far as that goes. Again, um, this may be, a question was about, about getting Google Slides into Seesaw. This may be, this may be like, uh, uh, we, I've talked to the ed tech department about possibly doing an, uh, a, a, more of an extended webinar series with them or they are doing it. So whatever we don't cover in today doesn't mean it won't be covered in the future. Um, so if YouTube videos were added, again, a question on YouTube videos were added, would students be able to see them? So if YouTube is opened up, you would be able to add a YouTube video as a link. And so you'd have to add it a link. You couldn't directly embed it in a seesaw. So students could click on the link and go to YouTube. That's only if YouTube videos are added it added on there. Um, and so um, I don't, I, I, unfortunately I'm not in the department. That's uh, the ed tech and the IT um, are talking about that. Um, and so I will definitely pass the word along. So going back to the wrench here, I'm gonna click on the wrench. Now what I'm gonna do, is I want to show you just a few things in here, okay? Um, by the way, um, a few, uh, just a few questions as they're popping up before I move on. Can YouTube, can you put link for YouTube for appropriate? Again, some of these video, some of these things are above my pay grade. Um, there are some ways to um, whitelist or allow certain videos. Again, I'm not sure. I can't speak to any of that. Um, as far as uh, Kayla, again, pausing for a few questions. You made some slides yesterday and you want students to be able to move them around. Well, if you're going to do that, it's you're not going to probably uh, do that through Seesaw. You'd probably want to do that through Google Classroom. You can you can um, do activities in Seesaw where students can move around. And again, that'll be kind of covered in the second um, hour. Um, and so again, continuing on here. I'm going to look at my settings. So you clicked on the wrench. I'm going to go and do it again in case you needed to. I'm on my Seesaw page up in the right hand corner. I see a wrench. I'm going to click on the wrench. Oh, my lights went off. That's okay. You can see here's some of my class settings. I can do a class theme. You can see mine's blue. I can do a class icon. Of course, my icon for my class is the Kinder Rockets. 
Here's something important for you to notice, by the way. Um, I wouldn't change this at this point if, if, you ha if you've changed it, but really what this should be is uh, share devices. We want to do a one-to-one -one class code, or you can do, um, uh, it, there, here's your other option. Okay, now the email for Google, um, again, you got to see what, I wouldn't change what you've already been doing. Most of ours should be the one-to-one -one devices, maybe for the younger kids. If you're using email or Google, um, that's another great. But if you've already have this, don't change the setting on your students right now on your class. Okay, so um, here's another thing. I'm not going to get into this. These are home learning codes. If students for some reason need help logging into Seesaw, you can send them an individual home code. Again, here, here's some all of some settings. Like, can students like and see each other's work? I'd say right now, yes, you want them to like and see each other's work. It, it, it you know, um, it, it creates that classroom environment. However, maybe those work require approval. That means as a teacher, you need to approve all of those. So enable item editing. Um, if you remember, and I'll show you where you can see this, this is important to turn on, and you can access this under, remember, those three dots I showed you. And if you don't remember, that's okay. I'll show you again. Sample of student is really important, I think. Family access, what I did yesterday, my family access is on and I actually got all, I invited all my families. You click on invite families, you can add them all uh, with telephone numbers. And then when, uh, when you can just type it in, it'll send them an invite. And again, you can control with families. You can control like everything that they like, everything that they, uh, if you, uh, their comments. Again, this is a little bit of the nitty gritty part here. Scrolling down, this is the part. So this is going to directly, Anna, answer the question you had about making sure your posts don't get lost in the in the journal, because they will. So here's my suggestion, is to enable a blog. You don't know what a blog is yet, but just kind of trust me on this. It says set up a public blog. That's fine. The only people that will really see your blog is the people that have the URL, right? The first time you set up your blog, you're going to need a name and it's going to ask you to create a URL. So, so test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever you want it to be. I made mine long um, because I don't want to eliminate that from somebody else. So let me show you about this blog. So enable comments on the blog. Sure, you can leave that on. You can leave that off. Password protect your blog. I would leave that off for now. Okay, so what are you doing here, Ben? I don't understand this right now. Okay, so um, again, I turned on the blog. Let me again show you why I turned on the blog. The question was, there's your blog, congratulations. The question was, how do I keep my items from my journal, my teacher items in my journal from getting lost? You can't, there's no way. When students post work, your items are gonna get lost. So here is my workaround. If you see now on your screen, now you have journal, activities, Inbox, skills, we're not gonna get it really get in these two today, inbox or skills. Now what do you see over here? Blog, right? You may need to make a video telling your students to click on the blog. All right, so here is, for example, this sweet video I made with my instruction, right? So if I look at this sweet video that I made for my instruction, on the bottom of the video or any item now you should see is a globe. What does that globe look like? It looks like the blog. Uh, thank you, Sean, by the way, for the home code. The administrator needs to enable that feature for me. That's good to share. So going back, when I click on this, what it's going to do is publish this item to blog. So what I do is the items that I don't want to get lost in my feed, I publish them to the blog. Again, it's going to take a second. It's a little slow right now. So when I click on the blog, I have control over what goes in the blog. And so you can see that video that I did, I would post those items that you want to keep students being able to access in the blog. I put some videos in there, some fun videos for my students. And that's kind of like they're also there. My students early finish activity, but my messages that I don't want to get lost can go into the blog. Hopefully that helps you. It's not a uh, uh, perfect. I mean, should you password? Um, and I'll review that again. Yes. Should you password protect the blog? I, I don't think so. It's just another step for your students to go through. It really depends. Like me, if I'm just posting my own videos, no need to password protect. So again, here's a review again for the blog. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. So um, when we go to the blog, again, how do I enable it? Click on the wrench. I'd much rather go too fast than too slow. So thanks for letting me know out there, all those people. I scroll down in my settings. I'm going to pause there where it says class blog. Okay, I'm going to pause there, take my cup of coffee, 
Cheers. You enable the blog. All right, you click on it. When you enable the blog, you're going to have to create a URL. That will be the website for your blog that you could send to people, and I'll show you how to do that. You're also going to have to create a name. These other settings you can kind of play with a little bit later if you'd like to. Like, um, no, again, I don't think you need to password protect your blog. So I'm going to hit the X. Once you get your blog started, I can come over here. I can click on the blog. Okay. And so I can click on the blog. And you can see my items that are in there. Here's my items. Students can watch that. So that's where I'd kind of put my morning messages or my messages that I don't want to get students lost. If I wanted to send parents a link to the blog so they could watch my messages, see how it, here I'm in the blog, see how the link is right here. So again, I can two finger click on the link or right click. Oops, rookie mistake. It happens to us all. Two finger click, okay? When I'm two finger clicking, see what it says here? It says copy link address, okay? Copy link address, two finger click, and I could send that to my parents or I could just highlight it, right? What's my shortcut for highlighting? And for copying, sorry, control, hold control, push the C button. If you're on a Mac, hold command, push the C button. So cut is C, paste, what is paste? Well, it's right next to the C, it's the V. Uh, sorry, I just got another message. Folders. Uh, Mr. Cho, I'm, maybe I'll talk about folders a little bit later. That's definitely more of an, I feel like a little bit more advanced for some of us, but um, folders is an option. So let's see if I can touch base on that. All right. And so, again, here's the blog link. You can send that to parents and that's another way for people to access just the videos that you want to see. So again, there's my blog. Here's my journal. Okay, so yes, there is work. You can have your kids organize work into folders. And I guess uh, this is maybe a good uh, uh, chance to touch on this. Folders is an option. Honestly, if your kids aren't used to folders, I might not use folders. The way I really organize my work is in activities. But if you wanna use folders, again, what are folders? Folders are just like a ways to organize your work. So again, if you feel like this is too much for you, that's okay. Don't worry about folders. I don't use folders. If you want to talk about folders though, if especially if you're above like a first or a second grade, totally appropriate folders. So again, where did I go? I clicked on my wrench and you can see my computer's a little bit slow right now. And so you can see here, there's this step that says folders. Again, I clicked on my wrench. I went down, I saw where it is in folders. So you can see where it says manage folders and show add to folder. And so for folders, again, a way to manage work, if you have a lot of people uh, putting stuff in there, is to create a folder, right? You can create folders to organize your class by theme. So you could create a folder if your students are used for it with all your morning messages in there, right? You can create a folder with all your videos in there. Again, I would, I would, if you haven't used this yet, you might not want to use your folders. Um, if you have, if you want to use that as another way to organize it, that is a good suggestion, Mr. Cho. Um, thank you for that. And so morning messages, I can choose the color. Okay, right now there's no items in that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back. So then who can add stuff to folders? I can do it so just the teacher can add stuff to folders or the students and teachers. Again, if this is something new for you, I wouldn't suggest using it. Um, if you just wanna organize it as a teacher and that's gonna help you organize your stuff, maybe in a later date we'll talk a little bit about folders, but basically that's the way it works here, again, I'm gonna click on here, and if I wanna maybe start adding my stuff for, to my folders, again, see now there's a little folder over here on my class journal, it says folder, and I can click on the folder. Brings me to where, class journal, but you can also add these stuff uh, to folders, and that kinda can help you keep it organized and perhaps your students. Again, it, um, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot for you. So again, if this is new for you, I wouldn't suggest it. If you feel comfortable with it or you're maybe a little bit more comfortable with Seesaw or your students are, um, then maybe I would suggest uh, going ahead and maybe using those folders and experimenting with them. Again, you can at least use them as a teacher. Sorry, my computer, it's like, oh, help me, help me. You're taking up too much power. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna wait. There, there it is, by the way. 
Okay, select folder. Oh, I, I didn't even, man. So let me go back down, sorry. You can see folder right here is now on the bottom and I can literally click on that and I can add this to my morning messages folder and that might make it easier for me to find as a teacher um, as well. All right, how are we doing right there? Um, yeah, activities for those of you that have been talking about this, um, in a second here we'll take a break and then we'll kind of talk a little bit about some activities. Um, so just take a minute. I'm going to take a minute to stretch. I've been doing a lot of sitting in front of a screen and you know what they say, right? If you're sitting in front of a screen a lot, you should look up for 20 seconds. Let's count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ooh, got my uh, my allergies going there within my nose. All right. So again, what have we done today so far? We've talked about uh, the types of assignments you can add to your journal. Again, let's think about those. Here's your review. I know that I can't hear you, but think about them. What are the types of things you can add to your students to your journal? Number one, photo. You got it. Number two drawing good job number three video yep video thank you number four upload right upload from drive upload a photo upload a video number five a note where you can type in and the last one for 100 bajillion dollars number six a link so these are stuff, and where do these items are going to show up? They're going to show up in the journal. Can they get lost in the journal? Yes. If you go to my class feed, I mean, you could scroll down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Let's review. Let's see. Did I have somebody else do something at home? Let's see what they did. Yay. Good job, Emily. I'm going to have to watch this a little bit later. Let's see how she did. Actually, I don't think she recorded it here, but at least she logged in. That's good to know. All right. So how are we feeling? Pretty good? Um, I'm gonna kind of pause. Let me see some of these other questions I have. Um, so hopefully the PDF question we answered, um, let me see, uh, share items in Google Classroom, uh, picture added to note feature, no. Um, losing post, got that one. Um, yes, we can chat later about uploading to Seesaw Google Slides. YouTube, again, YouTube is not available. Yeah, I'm sorry uh, for that. We'll see what happens. Uh, home code, it needs to be Seesaw for Schools Administrator needs to enable that. Thanks again, Sean. Um, yep. All right, good. I think I've added most of the questions that have been answered so far, except for the activities. So, um, Here's what I think we'll do right now is it's coming up in the hour before we get to the activities. What I'm going to do is I'll go ahead. I'm going to come here. I'm going to actually mute my microphone for a second and I'm going to put up like they did yesterday about a, a 10 minute. Uh, I guess I shouldn't mute my microphone yet. I'm going to put up a 10 minute timer. We're going to give you guys about 10 minutes. We'll come back and we'll jump in uh, into activities after that. All right. Better, right? Everything's better. Maybe it sounds a little bit uh, trite, but, you know, I, I really believe that. So the more we can work together, the better. Um, so a few kind of things I want to point out in my presentation. OK, again, there's lots of resources here. If you want to go back to my presentation again, it always will live at coachben.org. Um, but some of these, as far as these maybe give you some ideas and some examples of, of some things you can do. There's a few things that I want to point out for you that are interested in trying to create your own CSOC activities. Um, I can't, I'm not going to have time to do that all with this time. It's just not enough. But I have this uh, YouTube video that I've done here and you can see it's on slide 30. You can also go to my YouTube channel and you can find it there. Um, and that gives you a little bit of an idea of how I kind of make my Seesaw activities with move, movable parts. So Kayla, I make a lot of my backgrounds in uh, Google Slides and then I add the pieces later on in Seesaw that I want them to be able to sort around. 
Um, also, by the way, and I, I don't think we'll have time for it today. If you want to see, we'll see at the end. If you want to see kind of how I'm flipping my instruction, it's on slide 38. So these are two videos that are available to everybody. Let me turn this back to green so it doesn't drive you crazy behind me. Um, if you can see it. All right. So there's my taco hat. Yay. Yay for fun sometimes, right? Doing our best to keep things light and fluffy. Okay, so a few other questions that, that I've been kind of thinking about. A parent's guide to Seesaw with st how to access it. Um, I've, I've uh, definitely put that out there for the ed tech department about maybe getting some, some – <coughs> excuse me, uh, allergies. If you get some of those uh, tutorial videos in Spanish, right, because a lot of our parents are going to be accessing in Spanish um, – and so that's kind of a suggestion and we'll see everybody's on, on, on doing their best right now. So, you know, definitely some, some resource guides to doing that, um, for sure. And I, I think that there's, and my, to my knowledge, there's not any of those that are currently available in Spanish, um, for accessing it. The other way is, you know, kind of going old school and, and calling all your parents and, and walking them through how to log in. Um, you could also think about doing something like this, a meet where you connect with your parents. If you don't know how to do this again, maybe later on um, there will be some more training in that. So with that, hopefully that kind of answers a lot of your questions right now. The next thing I want to do is show you the activity library. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So what I've done is I've gone back to my test class. Um, and I'm going to just play around in there because that way your students won't kind of see you playing around. So again, we have this magical green button right up here. We're going to go there in a second. But So we have our journal. Our journal is where all of the posts show up, right? Activities are the best way I feel like to organize the material you're going to send students out because you can really see who's doing it, who's not doing it. And it's, it's your one shop stop for a lot of that rather than just having kids add stuff to the journal. You can still do that. I just think activities are a little bit cleaner. Inboxes where you can send messages. Skills, we're not going to touch skills. And then you have your blog. Okay, so these are your options. So we're going to go to activities. So to get to activities, you can do so in two ways. Um, oh, my YouTube channel? Yes, I can definitely, I will, uh, I can send that out um, for sure. Um, you can always just do a, a Coach Ben or Benjamin Cogswell, and, and I should come up. You can see my face in there. Um, and then those videos will show you how to do the picks. You cannot add the picks before I move on in slides. You have to add the movable parts and seesaw. Again, that's a little more complicated. So here we are. Activities, right? The light bulb. That's what I train my students. Click on the light bulb. So there's a few ways I can <clears throat> access activities. And when I click on activities, if I don't have any activities done, I can see Brass Activity Library right here. Again, activities are like uh, pre kind of pre-slotted templates. I can know I can go to add. This is how I usually get to there. Add, and I can go to assign activity. So I'll give you a second. Again, get back to your test class. Go to your tab. Look for the little seesaw icon on the top of your browser. Seesaw icon, right? If if not, go through your portal. If you closed it, find your test class. Again, your test class to toggle between classes. You can click here, right? You can click here right here, right on your face. You can go here, right, your test class. Um, click on your activities. So again, here's your activities. Or again, you can click here on the green button. Remember that green button is super powerful, right? The big green add button, add, ah, ah, add, right? Assign activity. So what it, this is going to do is this is going to pop over your open your activity library. So wherever you're at, hopefully you can you can either watch. Or I think the best way to learn is by doing. Um, again, my computer's a little slow. When your computer does this, it's a great time to take a sip of coffee. All right, here is my activity library. Now in my library, I have a ton of activities that you can see in there. Okay. Um, so we have a few options because we have Seesaw for schools, which is pretty awesome. We have my library, right? But then next to my library, you can actually click on school and district. And if you're a kindergarten teacher, you will already see a few of my activities that I have made specifically for at-home learning. And I put at home in this section, right? So you can see a few like Lisa Meloshenko. Thank you for doing that. I can see a few people that have put some activities in here. 
You can see who the activities by with their little icon. These are all people in our district. Shout out to George Lopez. Shout out to Lisa. Shout out to Miss Zavala. Who? Any other shout outs here? Shout out to Miss Gutierrez. The so, soap. Yeah, she's next door, by the way. I hear her say woo. Shout out to Miss Zuniga. Shout out to Miss Salinas. There's Susan Stewart. So all these activities are in our library. You, this is a great way for us to share. And I'll show you a little bit later on how to add these to here. Then you have over here the community. Now, if you've never used Seesaw again, when you click on your library, nothing's going to be in there. So again, what are activities? They're pretty much, they're, they're uh, like masters, they're templates, they're worksheets. Um, so you can see here, already we're going to click here. And so a few things I want to point out for me. My drop down bar right under community, it says kindergarten, right? So I can sort up here. And I can click on that drop down. I can sort by kinder. I can sort by first, second, third, whatever. So that helps me search, right? I also have subjects here. These are the subjects that Seesaw lets has uh, let you uh, tag your lessons with, and these are what you can search for. I can also go over here and I can click here and I can search for either names. Like in the past, I've searched for Mary Carr. Shout out to Mary Carr or Tara. Shout out to Tara um, for their activities. They have some great activities for. Um, um, the LPAC. I can scroll down. It shows you some popular ones in kindergarten this week, right? Okay. It'll show you some featured authors recently added. Okay. So again, this is just your, uh, your overview, right? And so let's say I want to assign an activity and let's say, for example, like I talked about earlier about bean math, right? This is an activity literally where I, I tell students, get some beans. That's why I call it bean math. I do a little demo. Sorry. Hopefully this is all you need for this bean math, right? You need a dice. You need a piece of paper. You need a marker. You need some beans. Students roll the dice. They put the stuff here. They write down their number sentence and I model that whole thing in this, okay? And again, um, that's a video I made, showed you in my slide deck, coachben.org, you can get it there. Actually, um, Kayla, if you go to coachben.org, you should be able to get to my YouTube channel as well, coachben.org. So here's this activity on bean math, which is actually, this whole activity is designed to not necessarily be done in Seesaw unless you wanna do a reflection, okay? Um, yes, uh, question, uh, pausing, yes, it, uh, our principal, as far as, do you need to share access to with Seesaw um, to anybody else? No, you're, you're a little scary, but the, your administration already has access to your Seesaw class um, because of the way um, that we have Seesaw for school. So people who are admins like um, have access to your class. So no, Ana, you do not need to share it with somebody else. Um, thank you for that question. So here's, this is the assignment, okay? so. I can preview what's here by clicking. There's a thumbnail here. This is the little video I did for my students. And so you can see here, here's my little video. I'm going to mute it. You can see I talk about it. Um, so you can check out your, your lesson here. I give some instruction. I'm basically, I'm not showing you how to make the activity. I'm showing you how to evaluate the activity. And there's no template for students. So it looks like, again, here's the instruction. Get some paper, watch the video, play the game, record what you learned, submit your work. All right, so if I want that in, if you like this activity and you want this in your library, you've looked at it, you like it, there's a heart up here. You can click this little heart. Where's it gonna add it to when you click the heart? Your library. You'll be able to access it later. Um, looking at these three dots down here, see the three dots on the bottom right-hand corner of your activity. If I click on those, there's some other options for this activity. Let you read those, add to collection, okay? Copy and edit your activity, delete your activity, remove from the school, share activity, okay? So if you like, for example, you wanted to change some of the instructions, you could copy and edit the activity, okay? If you want to add it to collection, basically that's a way you can sort it. You can see here I have some collections. And so like I could say, oh, this is in math, or maybe I want to make a new collection and call it home learning. Right, so I just hit the plus sign up there. I can show you that again, right? So I clicked on the three dots. I went to what? Add collection. This helps me organize it. <clears throat> Click on the plus sign. And then I'm going to go home learning. And this, again, just helps me organize uh, it a little bit more. And then I could come and I can click on home learning and I can add it to actually more than one. 
All right, so let's say I want to assign this to my class. And yep, you guessed it, this big green assign button I can click on. Now you have a few options. Now I'm, uh, I can assign it to my test class here, okay? So I can click there. When I do that, it assigns it to the whole class. I can assign it to the whole class, right? So I'm gonna do that, assign to whole class. This signs the activity. Now the quickest way to see the activity in the class is down here. See this little link down here where it says view activity in the class? I'm not gonna click on that right now. Sorry, pump fake. So again, assign activity. You can assign it to the whole class or see over here where it says edits, edit, um, oh, the kid-friendly directions with the icons. I'll get into that in a second with the activities. Um, edit right here. You can assign it to individual students. Right now, the only student I have in this class is this one, right? But if I went over here to my Kinder Rockets, I can I can unclick here. I can assign it to all these different people. All right, and so here's my test class. Again, I can send it to individual students if I want to. I could go here, I could check here, and then I could get assigned to class. So what does that look like? So now if you want to, you can click on here. We'll come back to the activity library in a second. All right. So here is the activity again. Here's me clicking on the journal. I'm back in my classroom. If you need to, if you didn't, were able to get back to your classroom, sometimes in the top right hand corner of your screen, it will say back to class. If you're in your activity library, you can click on that again. If you're not in your classroom, click back to class in the top right hand corner of your screen. Here's my journal. My activity does not show up in my journal until it's completed. Here's why I like activities. All right, now let me show you in my own class, I'm gonna jump over here. You don't need to change if you, uh, I'm gonna, cause I wanna show you what it actually looks like. Now I've had, um, of course, give it a second. Right, my computer is like, oh, you're doing too much. This is a Chromebook. It looks like it's handling the recording. It's handling everything we're doing so well, except of course when I want it to. So what am I gonna do right now? What do I do teacher, what do I do? Well, there's this. This is what I'm going to try and hopefully this helps. If you look um, on a Chromebook, you can refresh. There's actually a button to refresh on the Chromebook. It looks like the little uh, half circle up here. Reload this page. On the Chromebook, you have that. I'm I'm doing this from a Chromebook. Oh, it looks I didn't wait long enough here. You can reload the page. All right. So I'm going to give it a second here. I'm going to reload the page. Hopefully uh, the stream is still going well and I'm not being too glitchy. Again, we just got to be patient or reload the page one more time. If not, what do I do? I can open the page up. I'm going to check my Wi-Fi. Single is medium. Oh, yay, it's reloading. Loading, loading, loading. Keep those doggies loading. Rawhide. Yeah, it's a pretty old TV show. I know. I can remember it for maybe some of you that do. Or anyways, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go to my class, Kinder Rockets. I want to show you um, what my activities look like. Again, you can see at the bottom that popped up, review posts. And so my activities, let's see here. I've sent a few of these home. I've gotten some mixed responses. And let me see here. Here is one of them. So with this, I can see I can click on this gray bar in my activities. And I can see it's going to have all of my students pop up. And then I can see the students that have completed the activities. And I can see it all in one shot. I don't have to go scrolling up and down in my um, feed. Um, fortunately, the, because we have first and last names in here, this is only right now streamed inside our district. But you can see here, I can check on the student. I can give him, I can, look, I, I, uh, I hit a love there for that, right? I, uh, I left a message for the student. I showed you how to do those things earlier, right? Um, and so that's why I like activities. It's this whole idea of you can see like a one, it's like your one-stop shop, uh, if, if you will, um, where you can see like everything your students are doing. For example, I, I needed to see which of my students could count to 100, right? This is obviously before we went on break, but literally you can see here, I'm able to see all of my students work. I'm able to click on it. Again, it's in a one-stop shop. Are these going to show up in the journal? Yes. 
when I come over here to the journal, I can keep again, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. This time it's scrolling, scrolling, scrolling instead of loading, 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 scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I could just keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling as fast as my computer loads in my journal. And I would be able to keep going down and keep going down, see some of my morning messages, student work, student work, keep going down. It's in my journal. I don't want to do it that way. Yes, you can use folders again. Yeah, I can, I can show you again um, all of those steps. Don't worry, I'll do all those steps again. Again, the benefit of using activities is when I click on activities, and when I post an activity, right, here's my activity. This one I've posted right here. Again, it's hit or miss right now. I'm just doing our best. You can see I don't have any students that made a little video for me. That's what I want them to do is do a three little pigs retelling and make me a video. Again, um, a non-computer screen-based activity except for record it. And so again, those activities, I click on the gray bar, I can see which of my students have turned it in. To assign an activity, I'm gonna do that again now, and I am going to go, it actually doesn't matter which class I'm in. I'm gonna hit the green plus button. I'm gonna go to assign activity and go back. I'm gonna show you that just one more time with a different activity. All right, thank you for asking me to do that again. I appreciate your patience. Hopefully this is helpful for you. So here I am, where am I? I'm in my library. I can see I'm in my library because it say here it says here here's the activities that are all in my library. So your um, first step again is to find an activity you like. So I'm going to come to the community. Now here's again the thing with an activities that a lot of them are not going to include that instruction. They're just going to be an activity. So it's that whole idea of like giving students something without providing any instruction. If my students have already done it, they're going to be successful. But it's something new. They're going to need some instruction. Um, so let's say I want to look for CVC words. So again, I went to community, right? Community, you can see there I typed in CVC. And literally, you can see these are all some activities that with CVC words that people have gotten, right? Lots of different activities, you can see. Um, so you can pick an activity, you can click on it. If you click on the, the the person's name, it will take you to their page. So you like, you can see, oh, there's Coach Ben. If you click on mine, it will actually take you to my page with all of my activities. But I'm gonna go back. Um, again, hitting the back button. I'm gonna click on this activity. If I want it in my library, what do we do? Oh, if you have, how do you add things? To, and here's another question. How do I add these things to my school library? I will show you. Thank you for that great question. Sharing is caring love okay so if i want to add it to my library what do i do you got it you hit the heart right how do i add my activity to the library i hit the heart that way i save that activity okay how do i add it to a collection think about it look at my screen how do i add it to a collection to keep it organized yes the three dots okay now if you notice this is an activity i created Right, so if I wanna add it to collection, I click there and I click on add collection. I showed you that once. Hopefully that's simple enough, you can figure it out. Here's a question on how do I share it to my school community? So if I wanna share this activity to my school community, what does it say down here? Share activity. Now mine's gonna look a little different. I can share mine to the Seesaw library because I'm a Seesaw ambassador, but you, regardless of being an ambassador or not, can share to school and district communities any activities that you make. Okay, and how do you do that? Literally, you just click share. It will ask you what are the grade levels, what are the subjects, do you want to just share it with your school or the whole everybody? So once you fill all that stuff out, you click share. The activity you have now made is now available for everybody else to use. Great job, thanks for sharing those. Okay, so again, this is an activity. I've chosen this activity. I've added it to my library by clicking on the heart right here. I could add it to my collection to clicking on the three dots, okay? Um, I'm gonna hit assign to get it to my class. Okay, I can assign it to my class. Assign it to class. Okay, so if I wanna see what this looks like in my class, then at the bottom, I can click on test class. If not, I can hit the X and look for other activities. Here's my activity. You can see it's in the activity library. Again, this is a test class. I don't have any students. Um, here, right here. You can see, I can click on this. I can see all oh, my one student in my test class. Yes, my sample student. All right. Now, here's another thing. If you want to kind of try out your activity, 
here's a great thing for you to try out the activity that you're doing is you can click this add response button. Okay, so let's see how activity works. I'm gonna add a response. Now as a teacher, this will pop up for you. You actually be able to select who you wanna add the response to. And I, that's why it's very he helpful to have a, um, a uh, um, excuse me, distracted by questions. That's why it's helpful to have that sample student. Yes, you can type the instructions in Spanish. You can certainly do that. You can record the instructions in Spanish. You can, I know Irma Zuniga has some uh, activities. If you find her in the activity library, she has some activities in Spanish. So every, all of this can be done in Spanish. You just can't change the things like where it says view instructions or draft. So here's the activity, right? You can try it, right? You This one, you'd re, like record, right? So students would record. Three, two, one. All right, students, right now we're going to practice stretching our words. I don't want you just to break the words apart. I want you to stretch them. By the way, only you can see me on the camera. They can. I'm just, you know, that's what we, I guess, we do as teachers. So watch what I'm going to do. Stretch it. Come down here. Click on your arrow. Click. Ready? We're going to stretch. P -ig. If you need to say it again, say it again. P -ig. Pig. All right, let's go to the next one. D Add. D Add. Remember, some letters we can't stretch because of the sound they make. It's a stop. What about this one? Sun. Ooh, I can stretch that one out. Sun. So basically, you can see now how I'm using this activity to be able to model it for my students. Okay, when I'm done, I can hit done. Again, five minute limit on it. I can have to wait till the screen pops up. Okay, now this time, because it's an activity, I'm not gonna choose who to, who to assign it to, but let's say I want my students to see that video. Where could I put that video that I want my students to access it? Hmm, is it gonna get lost in the feed? Yes. So where can you put it? Where can you put it? You guessed it, that's why I use that blog. That's why I use the blog. So I click the blog. Again, this is like my model, right? I click the blog, I can publish to blog, and that way students come over here. You gotta train your students a little bit. You may have to make a video about how to do that, right? They come over here. You can see here's the two things in my blog, my little activity lessons. So students can see that's one way you can model it to students, right? One way you can get your instruction at home. So it's not just just a piece of paper. Could I give students this piece of paper and have them practice reading at home and rainbow write all over it or give it to them blank and have them write it? Yes. But hopefully you see the benefits of recording some of these videos and putting them in there so students can see that instruction happen. And you know what? Well, it's only five minutes. Honestly, for like the younger kids, if your video is going over five minutes, you may want to consider chunking your concepts down right? Instead of doing like five sounds, maybe you only want to do two sounds. Um, so just again, some food for thought. So that activity, again, I can click on activities. When I click here on the gray, you can now see that my response is here. If you have to approve responses, you'll see that it needs to be approved. It's this teacher response, so it doesn't need to be approved. Um, you're also going to be able to see it where? Yep, in your journal. So you can see it here in your journal. That's where it's also going to show up here. You can see, again, this is why things get lost in the journal because when students start posting stuff in there, it's just this massive stream of stuff. And again, that's why I like activities because it bundles your lesson together. You can see in one click who's turned it in and also being able to add some of those videos that you want students to watch to where you can add them, you got it to the blog. All right, so how are we feeling so far? Um, hopefully we're feeling good. Again, a question on educational videos on YouTube. Again, that's above my play, pay grade. I think, you know, EdTech is wanting to make sure to keep our students safe. And if they have access to all of YouTube, um, they might not be safe. And so maybe we're, we're figuring, again, we're figuring that out as we go. It's that, uh, that what is it, the metaphor of, of building the ship, right? Building the ship while we are, are, are flying the ship, right? Or sailing the ship. That's what's happening now. Um, and it's hard. It's Again, it's not easy. Um, so yes, to clarify, I think, um, what can you put in the blog? Morning messages in the blog, directions in the blog. Um, 
If the first two days are in the journal, yeah, you can just add them to the blog. So like if you have your morning messages and you want to add it to the blog, you just go down to your message, you click on the blog button. So here, let's say this is my morning message here. In fact, I'm going to maybe, let's see if it doesn't take forever. I'm going to add a few morning of my morning messages to my blog. That's a great idea. I just uh, hadn't done that yet. So I'm going to go back to my class. You can see how I'm toggling it. I'm going to find my morning messages. Now, one of the ways I can find my, I actually put them in a folder, but uh, because I don't have a whole lot, I'm going to, let's see. By the way, when you add them to the blog, you're going to want to add them in reverse chronological order, right? So the things that I add right now, everything I'm going to add to the blog will be put in, it will like, it will, um, be at the bottom so the newest stuff I want on the top so if I'm having to add anything to my blog like those morning messages like here's my morning message this was uh, the 16th I'm gonna add this to the blog right I'm gonna publish it to the blog right then if I want to go to my next morning message which I believe is today right the 17th um, I'm gonna go and add that next that way my seven that my that message is on top the other message is on the bottom you also want to consider like removing stuff from the blog and it can be done literally in the same fashion if you want to remove it from the blog if you're if your content is starting to fill up on there so i added that to the blog here's my today's morning message i can see even some of my parents have seen it right i'm going to click on this i'm going to click publish to blog now again you could see over here when i click on my blog you can see that I have my messages here in the blog. So the one that I added most recently will be on top, right? And so that's why when you're adding it to the blog, you want to do it. Uh, the things you want at the bottom, you're going to add first. And then and then the things you want on the top, you're going to add last. Yes, Anna, the reason that your Seesaw does not have the blog option, let me review, um, is you need to come to your wrench. So if you don't have a blog option, again, come to your branch. Right, your wrench is in your top right corner. You're gonna go down, right? You're gonna go down and you're gonna have to enable your blog. You can see my students cannot post to my blog. I turned that off. I enabled my blog. Once you enable your blog, it will show up in your seesaw. Um, so I've had a few questions on adding instructions to activities. So um, let me kind of show you as far as, as, as that goes, a, a few uh, ways to do that. Okay, so how do I get to my activity? Let, let's think for a second. I'm gonna let you think before I just tell you. Um, no, Kayla, I don't think you have a, a limited space in the blog. I've never run into it, but you never know. You could be the first. You could be the winner at running out of space. So I'm gonna come to activities, right? Or I could just click on journal. And if you notice, by the way, when I go to the blog, what doesn't show up? My favorite little green button. But when I come to journal or activities, that will show up. So I'm going to go to journal or activities. It doesn't matter as long as I have the green button. I'm going to hit the green button. Um, and then I am going to go to assign activity. I did have a handy dandy cheat sheet here with my icons. I may have taken it home. Anyways, I will show you in a second. So um, those of you, maybe we're going to take a step forward. Making activities, okay? Making activities to create an activity. If I want to make my own activity, I can keep it as simple as I want, right? I can click create activity. And so let's talk about the parts of an activity. Number one, you need the activity name. So I'm going to call this a test activity, test activity, right? If you want to create it again with me, again, I'm in the activity library. I clicked on activity. I clicked assign activity. I clicked on create activity. Um, so. Here's what I'm gonna do. My instructions, I'll get back to those. So you can type students' instructions. You don't just have to type them. You can add voice instructions. You could. This is where, for those of you that are a little bit more savvy, this is where I'm in adding my video instructions here, okay? Add a template or a response. So where it says student template, this is, think about this as a black line masters, all right? Think about this as black line masters. I'm gonna show you the least, the easiest way you could ever make an activity, okay? I'm gonna do a photo. Let's see. Ready, watch this. Super, this is super low tech. All right, super simple. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do for the photo. I'm gonna write, let's see, the uh, words TH. So let's see, uh, that, no, it's not super strong sound, shell, 
she, those. Anyways, I'm writing these words, okay? So I could do this. I'm literally just going to take a photo. Now, my students could write on this photo, right? Take a picture. Boom. All right, so here's my activity, right? Maybe I just want my students to read those words. That's all I want them to do is to read those words. Could I do it in a Google slide? Could I do it in a PDF? Yes, but again, this is the simplest way for those of you that are a little trepidatious. I literally just took a picture, whatever. Can you take a picture of a worksheet? Yes, just remember, how small is the writing gonna be? Okay, so I could, I could click check. So this is what the students are gonna be able to see. All right, so now, instructions, instructions. I can add voice instructions. So here, if I want to add voice instructions, I can click here. All right, students, you're going to go ahead and open the activity. What I'd like you to do is click on the microphone and go ahead and record yourself trying to read those words. If you want to, you could use that little mouse, that arrow that pops up um, on the bottom when you're recording yourself. All right, do your best. Okay, so those are voice instructions, right? Simple. If I want to type instructions, I could type my instructions. So number one, open activity. I'm not getting to the question yet with a fancy. I'm just doing this right. Number two, uh, press record. Okay. Number three, oops. Number two, press record. Number three, read the words. Number four, uh, submit your work. Now, some of these, actually, for some of these instructions, I've been translated into, into Spanish as well. Let's say I want the, um, let's say I would like the, uh, those little icon activities to show up. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open a new tab. I'd encourage you to go ahead to do this with me if you want to know those shortcuts to making those seesaw, those really seesaw friendly icons. So I'm going to open a new tab. You can hit Control or Command T. I'll get back to that blog question again. It's popped up a few times, but I will show you again. I'm going to type in Seesaw Icon Shortcuts. Seesaw Icon Shortcuts. Now, some of these shortcuts I know. And you can see it's like one of the first things that pops up. You can print this out. Is these things. Okay, so these are the Seesaw Icon Shortcuts. So let me show you how this works. For example, let's say I want them to uh, record. And oops, sorry. Record, you can see here, I'm going to look, and I know this is probably a little sorry for you. If I want students to click on the mic, I'm going to put, it says the instructions right here. Colon, mic, colon. Again, don't feel like you need to do this. This is just maybe if you want it. So instead of saying press record, I want them to press the mic, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shift, colon, mic. Okay? So open the activity, press the mic. Read the word, submit your work. And so to submit the work, they need to push the check. So I would go and I would look at my icons. What does this say for the check? Colon, check, colon. I'm going to come back here. And I know at some point some of you guys may be lost at this point. That's okay. If you don't feel comfortable with this, don't worry about it. This is maybe for the people that feel a little bit more comfortable with this. Well, you say that's not showing up, but watch what happened. So I made my activity right. I attached my template. I recorded my instructions. I wrote my instructions. Okay, I'm going to hit save. Now, what should happen is when I save it, we're going to, if I type them correctly, guess what's going to happen? Yep. See, you see the cute little icons that you see in here? You can see those cute little icons. Again, all I did is do a Google search for Seesaw Icon Shortcut. So now I want to assign this to the class. Again, I can hit the green button. I'm going to assign it, assign to my test class. Okay, let's assign it to our test class. So I just made this. You can see kind of how it goes on here. Um, and then I'm going to go to test class. When I go to test class, again, you can see here's my activity. I can see the instructions. I can play the instructions. Here's how it works, right? I click on add response, sample student. You can see what pops up is my picture here. So again, students can hit record. They can get their little arrow here. Arrow. All right, let's read those words, okay? That shell she those. Thanks for watching, Kinder Rockets. Great job. By the way, my Kinder Rockets always end their videos with that.
Okay, I always encourage the kids who watch it again, hit the check mark. And then, again, if that's my model and I want students to see it, where can I add it? Into the blog. All right. So again, one more time to review the blog. Click on the wrench. Okay. And the wrench is in the top right-hand corner. I'm going to scroll, 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 scroll down where until it says class blog. I'm actually, it doesn't matter because this is test class, right? Enable blog. When you enable the blog, it will ask you for two things. It will ask you to create, kind of like your website, your URL name, and it will ask you to, you got it, name your blog. Okay? So once I do that, I can hit check. Okay? That's how you enable it. Now my blog should show up here. And where do I find my URL to my blog that I just made? You can see it's right here at the top of your blog. Hopefully that helps. Um, repetition is great. We do it for our students. We don't always do it for adults. So I have no problem showing you these things again. Thank you, those of you that may already know this, for being patient with me. Um, I appreciate that. Um, all right. So hopefully we're feeling a little bit better. Um, a little bit better. I'm going to wait. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes um, to, to see again. It, this is a fairly simple tool and I feel like it is very appropriate because, you know, the kids, if you start, you know, training them to go to activities, um, they can go here. If you want to start showing them, right, like um, how to add stuff, great. Um, so just pausing a second, making sure there are any questions. And there's one more little thing I want to show you. For some of you guys, again, it might be a little more advanced. I'm going to show it to you. Now, remember, this is being recorded. You guys are going to be able to watch this again. Um, if you want more of these, um, you know, just let your principal know. Um, let your ed tech department know that you just like continuing and ongoing support when it comes to these. Um, I don't mind. I, I, I love helping people, especially my fellow colleagues in Alisal, and, and that's why I really was a TOSA for a long time. But, you know, I went back to the classroom and I just missed the students and, just loving it a lot. Anyways, um, again, just giving people a second if they have any more questions. So here is maybe the last thing I'm going to show you. Um, again, uh, as a reminder, a few different things. If you go to this presentation, two things again I want to point out. For those of you that um, for those of you that really want to flip your learning, that are more uh, comfortable with Seesaw. Uh, thank you, Alex, by the way. Um, that Those of you that are more comfortable with Seesaw, right here, you can watch this link. This is how I'm flipping my videos with Seesaw. For those of you that want to be able to make better uh, or uh, increase your activities to make them more interactive and engaging, here on slide 30. All right, slide 30, it's all in the presentation. Where can you get this presentation? coachben.org. Everything I try to put on coachben.org, there's other ideas there as well. Um, so if you want to do that. So another one with the icons. So the icons, again, I know the icons was really small on my page, but just literally open a new tab if you want to know the icons and go to Seesaw Icon Shortcut and just do your Google search, and those are where your Seesaw icons uh, will show up there, okay? And so when you type in those, and again, I know it's, I apologize, it's super small on my screen, but you can go there, you can download it, you can go to the blog post. Seesaw has a great support uh, services. They are so, they have so many different videos. They have a Facebook page, by the way, which is really great as well. So again, I know those are, are very small on my screen, um, I would suggest printing it out. Um, uh, sometimes I'll also just bring it up on my phone so I don't have to toggle back and forth. All right. I want to show you this last part. So let's say my students are not feeling comfortable using Seesaw. If I can get a, a, something to my parents, can I show them how to do that? Sure. But I need a video in which I can maybe record my screen so I can talk through my students how to access some of this stuff, right? Hopefully your students have logged in before. Pause, sorry. All right, so if you want your students to be able to see exactly what you want them to do. Remember Screencastify if you saw it yesterday? 
all of us have Screencastify. All right. I know Josh has an excited announcement. I don't know when, if he announced it, announced it yet. I'm sorry if he hasn't, but guess what? He paid for it for us. And so we have a lot more features. Thanks, Alice L. Ed Tech. Thanks, IT department. Thanks, um, all the people that's making this happen on the fly, super fast. Just be thankful. You know who else I want to thank? I want to thank the garbage man I saw out there today picking up, you know, the trash. I want to thank uh, the field workers out there that are picking it up. Um, just there's so many people that we have to be thankful for right now. Sorry, I'll get off on my soapbox. Um, as you can see, my computer's a little slow just because I got a lot going on. <clears throat> so if I want to make a video of maybe what I want my students to do, check this out, right? Here's Screencastify. Again, Screencastify, I'm going to record my desktop. I'm going to turn off my webcam for now just to save a little bandwidth, but here's my microphone. So literally check this out. I'm going to make a video. You probably, honestly, if you're making a video for your students, keep your webcam on. They want to see you. As many YouTube videos as you want to send them, you are the most important person, I think, that's going to teach them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit record. All right. By the way, no, students cannot add activities, only me. So I'm going to hit record. I'm going to hit my screen. Ready? So this is an, a, a video I could make and send to my students. It's going to go three, two, one. Hey there, students. It's me, Mr. Cogswell, and I want to give you a little bit of a refresher on Seesaw. I am putting some activities in Seesaw. So remember, you log into your Seesaw. You can log in through the portal. The first thing I want you to do every day is check on activities. Now you're going to click on the activities. All right. One thing that's important for you is I've also included some instructional materials in the activity. So if you see this play button right here, I want you to click on this play button right here and watch this. When you are done with these activities, maybe you want to come over here and click on the blog. So go ahead and click on the blog. You can see I put some videos just for you in there. So that's a good place to check out. So remember, every day when you log in, the first thing I want you to do is the activities, right? Watch my instructions. I put the instructions in the thumbnail of the activity. And then after you're done, go to the blog. So those are some easy things to do. So keep up the great work, Kinder Rockets. So uh, sometimes you'll see the stop sharing at the bottom of the screen. I can come up here and re-click on my Screencastify icon. Okay, I'm just going to have to wait a second again, um, just because my computer, my Chromebook has a lot going on. Right, you can see it's, it's being recorded, so I can do stop. So now it's going to pop up in a new window. Again, how do you add Screencastify? If, if, if that's, that's, it should already be, if you're logged into your Chrome account, it should already be there. Um, Uploading things from your Google Drive, it's not letting you. Uh, that's going to be some of these issues, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one support with either EdTech. I know there's some EdTech liaison. Some of the support we're still working on getting. So check this out. Um, so right now it's going to load up to my Google Drive, right? Um, sorry if you missed the, screen cast, the lesson on Screencastify yesterday. I know you can go back and watch it again. So I'm going to make this like my uh, message to students, right? Message to students. Let's see how this works. So there's a few options. Number one, right here, I can download it, right? And then upload it again. However, because this should be shared in my Google Drive, let's see if this works. Okay, I'm gonna hit the green plus sign. I'm gonna go to post student work. Again, where's the Screencastify store that I just made in my drive, okay? And I'm gonna select from drive. Let's see if it shows up the way we want it to. Again, you might not have to. You might have to connect your drive. You might have to log in. You might have to log out. It might just be taking a second. And so, let's see here. What did we call it? Oh, it's going to be in the Screencastify folder because Screencastify automatically creates a folder for you. And you can see it here. We go. Message to students. I can click on that and I can select it from Screencastify like that. And guess what? Da, 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 da. my message to students where I give them a little mini tutorial about what to do. There it is right there. So I use Screencastify again. It should be up here on your computer if you are logged into your Alice Al account. It should be automatically there. Literally, it's, it's simple. You click on it. You may have to sign in with your Google. You may have to enable the camera, a few of those things. But now, there's my little video tutorial for students. I can share with all my students. Again, only one of my students is showing up now because I only have this my test class, right? And where would I want to put this so it doesn't get lost in my feed? 
where would I want to put it? And this actually, maybe I need to make my own again in Spanish. It'd be hard if you guys want to make a video in Spanish and collaborate with that. Maybe we could work some out. Um, so I'm, oops, I'm going to come down here on my item. I'm going to click on the blog, right? It's going to add it to the blog. I also might want to share this with my parents in something like Class Dojo, right? So I can click here, publish to blog. Oops, again, my computer's a little slow. Publish to blog, click on the three dots, those magical three dots. Again, we weren't able even to cover everything in Seesaw. This is a two-hour session. Hopefully, you feel a little bit better about Seesaw. Remember, even honestly, if you're just using it to record videos for your students, do it. Even if you're just doing all your instruction on a whiteboard, do it. Again, so the three dots, I'm I, sorry, my computer again is a little slow, but once I click on those three dots, what comes up? Share item. And so I can share the item, I can copy a link, I can put it where? Okay, let's see if this works now. I can click here, I can share an item. Again, the three dots, any item you can do this. No longer see my screen, huh? Hopefully, oh, you can no longer see my screen. That's interesting, let me come back here. Thank you for letting me know. Interesting. Let me click here. Huh. It's technology, right? Let's see. Let's see if this works. Don't know why that happened. Let's see if this is working. Let me see here. I got this up on my TV again. Don't know how that happened again. This is technology waiting. I got a little bit of a lag here. So let me see if it's going to work now. I'm about a minute ahead of you, so I'm just waiting. <laughs> so um, I'll kind of maybe I'm glad that happened at the end, right? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm not sure at where we lost at, um, but okay. So hopefully, let let me just review a few steps. I recorded my video in Screencastify, right? How did I do that? I clicked on the little Screencastify image, right? I did my old video. It popped up here. Okay, it popped up here and um, I, I labeled it. Okay, so I labeled it, I can click right here, I can label it. Where is it saved? It's saved in my drive, right? So I wanted to add it to Seesaw. So I came back to Seesaw, right? I click on the green button. I did post student work. I'll go through the whole thing one more time in case you missed it. And where is it located? It's located in my drive, right? So I clicked on my drive. I selected it from my drive. Looks like my screen's still good. And Screencastify automatically creates a folder in your drive. So I clicked on Screencastify. I clicked my message. I hit select. It's uploading it. It's like maybe I'm just using too much power. That's why I did that. Here it is. I can test it out. I can hit the green check button. Looking up, I'm, I'm watching myself on too many technology things going on. I'm hugging too much Wi-Fi, I guess. I put it in there. Where's it going to show up? It's going to show up in my journal. Remember, at the bottom of it, you can add it where? You can add it to your blog. So once this comes up, I can scroll down to the bottom of my item. I see the icon for blog. I can add it that way. If I want, this is a video I might want to share with my parents to how to access Seesaw, right? It's obviously better if you have a Chromebook. I know not all of us do, but maybe we can still do it, especially in Spanish, right? I click on the three buttons. I click share item, right? I want to send this to my parents. I click share item. Okay. I can share this link. Again, make sure it's all selected. Here's a short foot for making sure it's all selected. Control A or command A. That's for all. Okay, again, my computer's a little slow right now. It's like maybe it needs some more coffee. Command C, Control C, copy it, send that link to parents, and that will give them direct access to that item. Again, my computer's being a little slow, so hopefully that helps. Um, that was a lot in two hours. Hopefully I went slow enough that you feel a little bit more comfortable. Remember, this is something that you can watch again. Um, Seesaw also offers uh, PD in your PJs. Let me just go over here. I'm going to stop presenting. Um, Seesaw, if you go to the Seesaw website, they offer some great support PD in your PJs. You can watch that. This is your time for learning. We do not technically have to start instruction until like, I believe, April 2nd. 
wherever that whatever the the boss says that's when we start instruction right so now is your time to play now is your time to try things out um and so just you got to just do your best right hopefully I'm, I'm more than willing to support as many people as i can um i'll do my best for those of you that contact me to answer your questions sometimes i'll have time sometimes i won't definitely trying to honor my family after 305. um let me just make sure I didn't ask any, uh, have any last questions I uh, didn't miss. Feel free now it, it uh, is officially over. Um, I know this is officially over. So if you want to go and go about your day, that's great. If you have any other questions, I'm going to stay on for a minute or two. Um, I'll keep monitoring the, uh, I'm going to keep monitoring um, the chat for a minute or two. Um, and so again, hopefully this is helpful. Thanks colleagues. Um, stay positive even if that means wearing a taco hat to work right do the taco hat with that again i'm going to stay on for a minute put this on happy saint patrick's day um again for those of you that want some more of specifically of those resources that you go to coach ben Dot org. This is some of the easiest way to get to my resources. For example, if I go to, it's going to redirect you to this Google site. You can see here, um, you can see here's the remote instruction. I do have some other PDs. Um, I do kind of uh, use a lot for my different PDs. Again, those are all learning tools. If you want them, use them. They're there. Um, you can also, for, to find my YouTube channel, you can click on this connect button. Right again, coachben.org, and these are all the different ways you can connect with me. So here's my YouTube channel. Again, I show you that because I do upload some tutorials. I do have some tutorials. Um, it's not the most organized channel, but I do have some tutorials on Google Slides, on Seesaw activities, um, and so my most recent one is again on on Seesaw. Um, and so you can see right here, you can see this remote learning with Seesaw. It's right there, Feel if you want to if you want to do that. If you're looking for other things on Seesaw, you see once you're on, on my YouTube channel, you can see this little magnifying glass here, any YouTube channel that you're looking for, and you could literally type in Seesaw on there. And then you can see here's a few, right? Here's a few things that I have. I have a crash course in Seesaw a few years ago. Um, and so here's all the things that you can see from me, some video tutorials that I have on Seesaw, like Screencastify, setting it up, ensuring to Seesaw. Um, that's a quick video on how to do that. If you want to create awesome sword activities, Kayla, you asked that a little bit earlier. Um, that's a great idea. Um, yes, and then remote le uh, learning with Seesaw. Um, so hopefully again that helps. I do had I did have one question about converting videos. You can't do that anymore because your computer doesn't let me. Definitely, uh, Creekside teacher, um, I'd need a little bit more on that. Remember, again, I, I might not be able to do. I'll do my best with this. But if you want to send me a message rather than an email, again, you can go to Hangouts.google.com. Hangouts.google.com. It's like kind of like a way to text me. Um, what you can do is you can come here and you can literally enter my name here and you can send me a message. Um, and again, um, I will do the best I can to help help you out. Uh, again, new conversation. I can't promise to help everybody out if uh, just because I'll just do my best. That's all I can promise. Um, reach out to your ed tech department, right? So if you enter my name in here, you can actually reach me and you can send me uh, messages. Um, so. Thank you guys for all your kind words. Hopefully if you have that uh, Creekside first grade teacher that convert video, shout out to all my friends in Alisao. You guys are awesome. Virtual high five, virtual elbow, virtual hat bump, whatever you do. Drink your coffee, drink your water, stay safe people and um, just keep up the good work. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I think I'm gonna stop recording and then I'm going